This time on Pedalbox, we drain the water out of our chassis and make a nice big notch for the gearbox to fit into. That's not good. No. Last time we got the engine almost fitted completely. Unfortunately, it just didn't fit because the gearbox is a little bit longer on the six speed and it hits the bottom half of our chassis just down here. So we're gonna take a big old chunk of that out and weld it up so that we can use this gearbox and we don't have to go back to the five speed. But before we show you that, there's a couple of other bits and pieces we dealt with. Hopefully we're keeping this engine installed here for a good while now because we had to, we have installed it like seven or eight times in the course of modifying that chassis arm. Yeah, I'm bored of doing that. I don't yeah. want to do it again for a while. Yeah, so before we slapped it back in, we also removed a couple of auxiliaries off the front that we mentioned a while ago, the power steering pump and the aircon compressor. And we've also figured out a new drive belt arrangement that can run our alternator even though we've lost all those other pulleys. So let's take a look at how we did that. The power steering pump and air conditioning compressor that we're using neither of need to go. So step one, we release the tensioner which is a spanner on the top, and wind that back, he says. And now we can pop the belt off, and now we can get into more of our bolts. The air conditioner compressor has two bolts here that are blocked by the belt normally, and the power steering pump is held on by a couple of bolts that are blocked by the pulley. So we'll pop the pulley off, get these two gone, and we're all good. <laughs> small snag here that we've already corrected for in our old engine. These motor mounts up at the top have a fair bit of room for adjustment on them, I'm guessing maybe to compensate for like chassis differences and stuff. Now this engine and transmission is sitting a lot further left on its mounts in the TT than ours was because we'd already adjusted it to make this work. And what that's caused, the transmission and our lower chassis arm here are right in contact and we're nowhere near correct installation position. So we're going to loosen this all up, see if we can move the engine kind of rightwards in the mounts and then bolt it all back together and see if it all fits or if we're going to have to notch that lower arm, which will be great fun. Unfortunately, it looks like the gearbox on this is slightly different to the other one because even with that adjustment, it doesn't quite spin fast. We can't get the torque arm to bolt in place properly, so we're just going to have to take the engine back out, notch around that and then put it back in again. That's not good. No. No, I don't like that. I have a lot of questions. Well, that came as a bit of a surprise. We thought this whole tube was sealed up top to bottom, so there shouldn't really be anywhere that water can get in. We had a look around to try and find the ingress point, but unfortunately we couldn't see anything obvious, so we decided instead to ignore the problem completely and carry on fitting the engine and transmission as if nothing had happened. We did at least take a few minutes to dry the tube out as best as we could, and we're basically just hoping that once we've sealed it all back in, everything will be fine forever. The first test fit didn't really go very well. We obviously needed to remove loads more metal than we thought. And after three or four more attempts at removing the engine, cutting a bit more out and refitting the engine, we eventually ended up taking a really big bite out of the leg here, a lot more than we thought we'd need in the first place. But we did finally make enough room for the new transmission to fit. On reflection, maybe this shouldn't have surprised us quite so much, since the original transmission, the five speed, was already really close here. And the six speed being a bit longer, this is kind of inevitable. One cover plate and coat of paint later, it looked as if we'd always meant for it to be that way.
Now we've got the notch finished, we can put the engine back in one last time. We've had this in and out about six times so far, but we've made a change. This is the old engine mount off the old engine that we had, and this is the one that came on this car out of the TT. Now this is filled with a really squidgy pad underneath the rubber mount, whereas this one just has a rubber mount and a big block that sits on top of it. When we were bolting this down, the whole thing was settling nearly half an inch or so, and it was actually exacerbating the problem even more, and we would have had to cut even more of the chassis apart, which we didn't really want to do because we were so deep into that already. So we put the nice simple one on instead of this active-ish mount, and we'll fit this one last time, at least for today. Now until we get the wiring harness out of our TT donor car so that we can run the ECU and actually light this thing up, the next easy one that we've got in front of us is getting a drive belt sorted to spin our alternator here to make sure we've got power. Now that we've removed a bunch of ancillaries off the front of the engine, we've removed the power steering pump from the bottom and the aircon compressor from just about here, we obviously need a much shorter belt to get around all the pulleys. The first thing we did was we took a length of masking tape and ran it around the pulleys, so we've got the crank pulley somewhere down here and the alternator up at the top. We ran our masking tape round the pair of them stuck it together and then cut it to figure out roughly how long we needed to be. Now accounting for a bit of measurement error, because you know obviously this is not an exact science, we figured we needed a belt somewhere between 920 and 940 odd mil. So just to show you what that looks like, here is the original belt, which is not 920 to 940 mil, it's rather long. So we'll pop that there. And here are the two belts that we've gone with as tests. Now the shorter of the two, uh, this one here is a 925 mil belt, which might be a bit tight, but we'll see. And the longer of the two is 938, which is on the upper end. But again, hopefully one of these will fit us quite well. So we're going to throw both of these on now, see where the tensioner ends up sitting, and make sure at least one of them is good for us. So we've got the line 38 fitted now and you can see the tensioner is right right round quite near the downswing here and we haven't really got a lot of room in there. I don't think it's really a problem but it'd be nice to throw the shorter belt on and see where the tensioner ends up sitting. Yeah I'm a lot happier with that. It's a lot trickier to remove and to fit but I much prefer having that much room in there. So that's our new engine installed. We've notched the chassis and taken out all of the water that was inside it. At least I hope that was all the water that was inside it. We'll call this a weight saving effort. Yeah, and speaking of weight saving. Yeah, we've added about another 10 kilos of lightness by removing these two ancillaries that we don't need. Yeah. And hopefully saved ourselves a few horsepower of extra load on the engine, so happy days all round. Because what we need, obviously, is a bigger power to weight ratio in something that we haven't finished, haven't turned a wheel, and have no idea how it'll handle, so go us. If you like what we're doing, subscribe to the channel, like the videos, and check out our website. Yep, uh, go to pedalbox.show to see what we're up to, store.pedalbox.show if you want to buy any of our merch, and patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow if you want to chuck us a couple of bucks every month. Yeah, we're starting to run into some fairly hefty bills to get this sorted, so hopefully with your help we can get it done a little bit sooner. Any support's really, really appreciated, guys. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.